I'm Andrew Joseph Keith. Welcome to this video um, demo that I'm going to be doing. If you're watching this on YouTube, this is part of my Patreon videos. These are the type of Patreon videos that I do. Um, the full video can be found on my Patreon page, and so I'll cut it down for YouTube. But I like to do these types of projects and just show you my process for sculpting. In this video, I'm going to be modifying this female uh, sculpture. I'm going to be changing the pose a little bit. I'm going to be taking references of myself to use as a reference for the arms. I want to change what's happening up here. Um, the rest of the sculpture, I pretty much like what's going on, but I, I just wanted to change some things. So I'll be taking references of myself. One of my patrons was asking, like, how do you decide on poses and how do you get references for that? And uh, especially if you can't find exactly what you're looking for. And so that's what I'm going to be going over today. If you're interested in sculpting, you can check out my Patreon page again, or you can check out the figure sculpting or the portrait sculpting courses over at Proca.com. Those are a great resource if you'd like to learn everything that I wish I knew when I started sculpting. I've really tried to put as much helpful information and as many steps that you can follow as possible so that it really makes it a lot easier to get started sculpting people. So what I'd like to do with this sculpture is actually change the what's happening with the arms. So I think I'd like this arm, um, this arm on this side reaching up and then this arm coming over and either her looking up or her looking down. I want her to be reaching for the forbidden fruit and turn it into an Eve sculpture. And that way there's a little bit more of a story behind the sculpture. It's not just a sculpture that's a nude female figure study. So if I knew enough about the figure, I might be able to get away with modifying things without taking additional references. But because I don't have enough confidence in my own knowledge of all of the anatomy and everything that's going on. I'm really just giving myself more information to make it more likely for me to succeed when representing this sculpture. So I've gone ahead and turned the camera onto its side so that I can see a little bit more of the upper part of the, the body. This is a Panasonic Lumix G85 camera and so with this camera there's a nice feature where you can just monitor it with your phone and so that's what I'm going to be doing just to make sure that I'm in the in the right placement and that everything looks good. It's a really helpful app. I'm glad they did that. I have uh, two soft boxes. So these are um, just big soft boxes that I got on eBay. They were under $100 for both of them. That's going to be my, my main light and then just my backlight over here. I like to have, you know, that key light and um, the backlight because it helps to be able to see the form all the way around, gives some interesting shadows. When you're sculpting, that can be really helpful. I'll take a pose that I feel would go well with this. And it, again, it's just focusing on this upper part of the body. I just want to be able to see you know, what's happening with the hands, what's happening with the shoulders, with the armpit area, which is really complicated. And so this will give me that information. I'm going to try a couple different poses and I'll, I'll try a pose and then I'll freeze and I'll kind of turn around slowly. And I want to turn around 360 or even past 360 usually to make sure that I get every angle and then I'll move on to the next one. And I'll just be taking a video of these different options for the pose and then I'll decide on one and then start modifying the sculpture. And just as a side note, I'd say, you know, it's worth it to invest some energy into your physical shape and to exercise and trying to eat right. That's something that is really difficult, especially in today's world. It's really easy to be unhealthy. It's easy to not have to do anything. We don't really have to uh, usually do a lot of physical labor, but just being active and being willing to exercise and stuff, that really helps when you're doing these types of things. And I really do believe that our bodies are a gift of God, that we were made in the image of God. And that's why when I'm sculpting this sculpture, you know, especially as it's reminiscent of Eve, I think, you know, God gave us beautiful bodies and we should take care of them the best that we can. They're a place for something sacred and that's our spirit. And so when I'm when I'm sculpting the the human figure, I'm always so impressed by how beautiful and how amazing it is that we do have bodies. Physical health, physical fitness, I think it really does pay off, especially if you use yourself as a reference as I often do. And I'm not in the best shape in the world, but I do try to exercise regularly and it is helpful. Now that I've taken some photo references and I have something to work with, I have those available to look at as I'm making some adjustments on this sculpture. Removing some clay 
just in this area to try to get a better sense of where the head is. So he takes pictures as the figure is spinning on a turntable and that really gives you a lot of information. I already like it more. And I think I might prefer the one where she is, she's looking down, bent back a little bit, probably remove the hair. I like that, that S curve that's coming through here. So I think I like that and I like that I, that the hip is pushing out this way, the rib cage pushes in this way, and then it's going back out. Do what I just did where you're cutting things up and moving things around. If you don't really love the pose, if you're not really excited about it, then change something. And don't be worried about, well, what if I mess the whole thing up? Because if you do, you can just fix it. If you don't fix it perfectly, at least you learn something as you're fixing it and you become a better sculptor every time you do that. So there we go. Hair probably filling in this area. Definitely long, long hair, long flowing hair to swoop off this way or to, or to come back. But then that will also make it a little bit easier to make a mold of. I'll be able to do a two-part mold, hopefully, um, and just split the figure in half. And we've got that sternocleidomastoid muscle that's coming from the clavicle over to the, the ear. It's just being able to, to bring that vision to life so that it roughly retains the same amount of mass. Or the arm was um, blocking it from this side, so I wanted to be able to see you know, the the details of the face a little bit better. What could I change that would just improve it just a little bit? I'm gonna come against, um, I'm taking away clay against the the form like this because I found that, that going with the form, for some reason it just makes it look more amateur and the, our tendency is to just drag it down with the form and you'd think like, oh, you, that would make it look better because the, the form of the forearm is going this way so we wanna drag it down this way. But for some reason, when you do that, it tends to lose some of its, uh, I don't know, lifelike quality, and it just feels more amateur. And so when you can, you might, you might start off by coming along the form and then come around the form to look right. People won't be seeing the, the model. They'll just be seeing the sculpture. And the crease in the hair somewhere over there. Maybe I want the hair to like flip up here. This hair on this side. In fact, I'll just give a little piece of clay to indicate the ear, just a little tiny piece, and then pressing that in to, to say here's where the ear's going to be. I'm liking the gesture and the body language and everything that's happening with this part of the, the figure up here. Mr. Bingham from high school said to treat hair like smoke. He was talking about drawing it, but I think it also applies to sculpture, that it's like, um, like smoke. So just let it be kind of playful and, and moving through space in a way that feels, feels natural. And then let's, let's just put in an idea of what's going on with the hand. When you're sculpting hands, just think of them as mittens, but just getting an idea of like, okay, what's happening with the hand, what's happening with the wrist, and treating it as a very simplified version of those. All right, so I think I'm gonna end it there. I'm already more happy with this the this this pose than what it was before so i'm going to continue to develop this um thank you for watching if you're on my patreon i really i really appreciate it it, it really helps and so if you're watching this on youtube and you'd like to learn more about sculpting you can consider going to my Patreon, getting the full video demos of things like this. You can consider going to proco.com, get the full figure sculpting course or the portrait sculpting course. Both of those should be really helpful for anybody wanting to learn sculpture, figure sculpture. I love sculpting, I'm really passionate about it. I think that the human figure is amazing and I think it's really beautiful. And um, I'm, I'm grateful that I get to do something that I enjoy so much. So I really appreciate everybody that supported in any way, even just watching these videos or, or liking them, sharing them. Any, any support whatsoever is greatly appreciated. Um, as always, I hope that you'll stay productive and stay creative. And hopefully, I'll see you soon.